Sounds good. Hello and welcome to Three Questions With. Got my buddy Brad Solomon with us from SC Digital. Come What's on. up, Kevin? <laughs> so, let's go right at it. Yeah. Brad, as a business owner, I often get frustrated and overwhelmed because I talk to a lot of people who have an opinion about marketing. It may not be a marketer, but they have an opinion. Kev, yeah. Kev, you really need to do this. No, no, Kev, you really need to do that. Yeah. Then I just freeze and I'm like, all right, I'm so confused. Who's right and who's wrong? Do nothing. <laughs> a lot it happens of all the time though, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times um, because there are so many different platforms, you, you, you try to dabble in every single one of them, but most people, unless they have a full on social media department, or that's pretty much what they do all day, or they've got somebody that's managing their social media forum or their digital marketing forum, it is very hard to do a really good job on all those different platforms. So you're talking about things like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, uh, now there's threads, there's Twitter or X now. And so there's all kinds of different things and just a matter of trying to figure out which one fits you best and where your audience is, where people are hanging out. So Brad, let's talk a little bit more about some of the common mistakes you people you see people make, you know, because we all have a limited budget, regardless of who we are. And you yeah. do something and it, you don't get the immediate results. You're like, that was a mistake. And you pull back. I think it's important to one, one mistake I see people make a lot of times is not starting with the result in mind, you know, not starting with what am I ultimately trying to accomplish? So their cousin tells them that they should do a thing, right? Say it's Google ads or search optimization or Facebook or Facebook ads or Instagram. Like somebody tells them that they should do a thing, but there's not oftentimes a reason attached to it. So they just start and then potentially stop after two to three months when they don't get the result that they really didn't set out to get anyways. So they're just doing things, going through motions without really an objective uh, set in place and then a strategy and tactics in order to reach a very specific objective. So we always like to sort of start with that uh, so that people actually have a direction that they're heading in. Um, and then going along with that, what we what we often preach to our clients is, is it is a good idea to be in a number of different places just because many times the realities of these different platforms do change. So you want to kind of have a diverse approach to what platforms you're advertising on. Um, you know, don't get too addicted to Google advertising because if the cost per click goes up significantly because more competition comes in and that's your primary way of getting business, then you could really be, then, then you're kind of hamstrung by that. So it's valuable to sort of have a lot of lures in the water and have multiple ways that you're that you're generating business uh, for yourself. Um, and other problems that I see just or other mistakes that we see is that sometimes we focus too much on the medium and not enough on the market or the message. You know, there's 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 market message and then the media that you use to broadcast that message to the market. Um, and sometimes folks get too wrapped up in, like you said, should I be doing this or should I be doing that? Should I be on Facebook? Should I be on Twitter? Should I be on LinkedIn? Should I be on Google? Should I be focusing on TikTok? But the reality is you should be where your market is primarily, but you really want to be focusing on what the message is that you're putting out there because a great message, a great offer that resonates with people at a very deep level and inspires them to take action, it will be successful no matter what platform you're on. Um, you could be on YouTube, you could post an ad in the newspaper, there could be a billboard with it. If your message is sound and the right the right customer base can see it, then you're going to be successful. So we like to focus more on those things. Question. What a lot of us are guilty of is in class, we call it vanity metrics. Hey, Brad, I just get on TikTok. I have X number of followers. Cool, sure. huh? Yeah. But not right. if they're not engaging with me or they're not my potential clients. So right. don't get caught up in just how many followers you have, because I see a lot of people do that, you know, hey, I hired this agency and they took my followers from 100 to 1,000. And they're like, sure. that's great. It's 1,000 potential customers. Yeah. Maybe. Bad it idea. Is a mistake. It, it, is a, it, is, it is a mistake in some semblance, in, in, in some respects, but on the other side, it is valuable to be able to demonstrate social proof. So it's valuable to be able to show clients that you have a certain number of followers or a certain number of likes on your page, because there are just certain people that unless you reach a certain threshold, that they, they may not even look at you. So that's why, yes, in some respects, vanity metrics don't necessarily pay the bills. Like you can't deposit likes 
and followers into okay. your bank account. However, um, you may be more likely to get a lead from somebody if they can very clearly see that other people have pre-selected you by following your page. Um, and and the same the same goes for things like um, on ads themselves. So we may run a Facebook ad, say, and it'll get to a point where it has 50, 60 likes and shares and some comments and so on. And it's got what we call social proof. Yep. We love that. I mean, we let those ride because at that point, you know, you've, you've, if somebody else comes upon that ad and they see that a lot of other people have already interacted with it or reacted to it, then they'll, they'll be more likely to take action on it themselves uh, because they can see that they're not the first ones to do it. And most people are afraid to be the first ones to do anything. Uh, so we like to use those types of authority metrics, um, social proof metrics to sort of make future customers, uh, you know, make it more, make it more feasible for them to become involved with you. I take it one step further. Is it okay to buy likes and followers? It depends on what you mean by buying likes and followers. So, I mean, I, I have no problem with somebody doing a post and then putting ad spend behind it and then reaching people that they wouldn't have reached organically, because quite frankly, I'm not a fan of, 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 of trying to guess what is going to be good for the algorithm today, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not a huge fan of trying so hard to understand the algorithm that I just get everything organically. If I have a message that I want to share with people, I have no problem putting my money where my mouth is and actually putting some spend behind it. So the people who do not know me, who do not know my business, um, will see it. I don't like to just take a chance that they'll see it if the algorithm likes it. Uh, so from that, from that perspective, I have no problem buying likes and followers because in, in a case, in, in that case, that's kind of what you're doing is you're paying to put your advertising out in front of people yeah. and they're going to like it and they're going to share it and they're going to follow your page. On the other hand, there are definitely companies out there that advertise that they will just get you 10,000 followers or 20,000 yes. followers, whatever the case is. Um, and most of the time, those followers are not good for your page because number one, they're, they're either robots um, or they're just... They're just people that don't necessarily fall within your target audience. And the reason that's damaging is that now the algorithm doesn't understand who your page resonates with. So when you actually do put up a legitimate post and your 10,000 or 20,000 followers are all people that are not in your target audience, like let's say you let's say you target small business owners and all of your followers are just these phantom followers that were put on your page by this company that you paid. Um, None of them represent your target audience. Now, Instagram, Facebook, they don't know what to do with your page. They don't know who you're following actually should be. Um, so that that we're not in favor of. All right, because I can go on all day with you and stuff. But um, yeah, let's, please. Let's, let's flip it over. Let's talk about SC Digital. Yeah. So I know you get that question. What makes you different than many of the other agencies out there? Yeah. So um, one of the main things that makes us different is how proactive we are in our communication with our clients. We understand that the results have to come, but you know, and, and the results of your campaigns will come. But what's also really important is that you have a point of contact within the agency who is there for you uh, to walk you through things and keep you informed and let you know what's happening. You know, a lot of the projects that we do, a lot of the, a lot of the things that we do in this agency can take a while. You know, it can take months to have a full-blown website built, um, depending on how big it is. Sometimes we get them done in a week. Sometimes it takes months. Um, it can take a while for a Google ads account or for a social media ads campaign to really start to pick up steam. Um, we believe that it's it's very important for somebody from within the agency to be keeping our client informed as to what is actually happening so that you don't feel like you've been forgotten um, and so that you know kind of what step on the process you're, you're in. So. That's one thing that I think makes us different. And then another thing too, is that we're just willing to say yes to things that I think a lot of other companies may not say yes to. Um, so we're we're willing to try things that I think others may shy away from. Um, we're willing to take risks. We're willing to go in there and sort of get in knee deep with our client and go, you know what? That's not a, that's not a process that we've had in the past. That's not something that we've established, but you're our client, you're important to us. So let's let's get in there and figure it out. And even if all the signs are saying like, this is not going to happen, this is not going to work. Um, you know, we, we, we kind of like when we prove that stuff wrong. Um, you know, so we, we have a client that we're working with right now, you know, 
he had an old website that was not even on the internet anywhere. It was just kind of in a bunch of files and, you know, he's kind of said, geez, I don't even know what to do with this. I want to see if this is even good. So we took it, we did a bunch of work. We got it on the internet. We looked at it, realized that, yeah, it's okay, but it's not, it's not ready for prime time. Um, so we're, we're rebuilding the whole entire website for this client, um, in, in record time, it's an e-commerce website. So it is not easy. It's kind of all hands on deck for this client. And I, I believe in my heart of hearts that most, that most people probably would have said, this is not something that we're going to be able to take on, uh, because of the depth of this project. Um, but certainly not for what we, you know, not, not for what we've been willing to do it for. So, um, we're all, we're, we're always trying to help our clients and find ways that we can make a difference for them, um, that are affordable and that also, you know, yield huge results. Uh, you may have already answered this question, but what's the favorite part of the job? Sounds like that might be it. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I think I think my favorite part of the job is when a client comes to us and says, you know, I've been trying to get my Google business profile approved for six months and Google is not playing ball. You know, they're saying that I don't meet the guidelines or I've been trying to get Google guarantee up and running for the last six months and they're just not they're not playing nicely with me. They're not being cooperative. And then I love when people bring problems like that to us. Because then we can use our resources and our experiences to solve those problems and go, yeah, we kind of see what's going on here, but we have seen this movie a hundred times before. And the thing that you actually have to do is this. So give us all your information. Let us go ahead and take care of it for you. And, you know, a couple of weeks later, they're approved with the Google business profile and they're on their way to having the Google local services account that they wanted. Um, those are really fun. Those are those those are really interesting experiences because we're taking something that seems insurmountable to the client and going, mm, no, we know how to we know how to we know how to get by that. Um, I had a client last year who had a website, but um, it was built by somebody that used to work for her company, and that person left her company. So my client didn't have the usernames and passwords. The year on the bottom in the footer said like 2017. Um, none of the information was accurate. All of the, you know, the phone numbers and all the employees on the employment page were all wrong. Um, and she's like, what do I, what do I do about this? You know, how do I, how do I handle this? Um, and, you know, I think it, it probably would have been really easy to go, well, I don't know. I can't really help you unless you get the username and password. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what we did is we said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to not even worry about that. As long as you've got access to your domain name, which she did. Uh, yeah. Luckily she had access to her domain through a GoDaddy account. Yeah. Um, I said, listen, it's going to be easier for us to take this website that you have right now, rebuild it, put it on a brand new platform, um, make it fast, make it mobile responsive, make it SEO friendly. And then that'll take us about the same amount of time. Um, so now she's got a brand new website and looks very, very professional and it's very well maintained um, by our team. So I, I, I love things like that where somebody comes to us with a problem that they kind of feel like might be insurmountable. And we just go, no, that's not, that's, that's, that's no problem. That's another day at the office for us. Awesome. Brad, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? How can they learn more? Yeah. Best thing to do is just to go to scdigital.com. Uh, you can book a zoom call with our team right there. Um, we'll do sort of a quick analysis of where you are with your digital marketing, uh, where you are right now, where you're looking to be and kind of what you're looking to accomplish basically. And then we'll be able to see whether or not we might be a fit to, to help you get there. And uh, yeah, we like to talk to people in all different industries because really for us, it's less about the industry that somebody's in and more about the problem that they have. And if it's something that we can solve uh, and the person or people that we're working with. So yeah, I'd encourage everybody to, to get in touch. Awesome, Brad, appreciate you taking a few minutes to call to the show. And as always, thanks for being my friend. Thank you, good seeing you.